This is our second problem that deals with coefficient of frictions. In this case, it says you drag a block horizontally. The block has a mass of 40 kilograms. If the coefficient of friction between the block and the surface is 0 0.3, how hard must you pull to give the block an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared? And we'll start by drawing a free body diagram. Block on some surface. The force is acting on the block. We are acting on the block. A pulling force. We have a force of friction that opposes this motion. Assume the motion is to the right. We have a normal force between the block and the surface pointing up. And we have a gravitational force between the earth and the block pointing down. Again, at this point, we can now write our Newton's second law equations based on our free body diagram. So the sum of forces in each direction. And we do our applied force minus the force of friction. This equals 10 times L. And in the y direction, it's just the normal force minus the gravitational force. And these are going to equal zero because all of our motion is in the x direction. And again, I should have just sketched out my coordinate system here, I'll call it to the right positive x, up positive y. Now we also, in this case, we always have two other equations. We have our gravitational force equation that states that the force due to gravity on our object is m times g. And we also have our friction equation that relates friction to the normal force through the coefficient of friction. So our problem set up, we can now go and try to solve it. Let's see, we're looking for our applied force, so that's kind of a hint we're probably going to go there last. To find the applied force we're looking for, that means we need to find the friction force, the mass of our object, and the acceleration of our object. We have the acceleration already. We were given the mass of our object. That means all that's left to find is the friction force. Once we have that, we can solve for our applied force. Well, else do we see the friction force? Well, that's also in the friction equation. That's not a minus, that's just me. Starting that equation, sorry. So we want the friction force. To find the friction force, we need the coefficient of friction and the normal force. Well, we have the coefficient. We do not have the normal force yet, though. Where else is normal force? Well, normal force shows up in our y equation. There it is. Find the normal force. We need to find the gravitational force. We don't have that yet. Well, where does the gravitational force show up? Well, that shows up in its own equation. To find that, we need to find the mass of the object and our gravitational constant g, which we have both of those. So that's how we can kind of point out what we're doing. You can kind of backwards plan, find what you're looking for, and see where you have to bounce around. So in this case, I'm going to start with my gravitational force equation. I'm going to move to my normal, or my, get the normal force using the Newton's second law in the y direction equation. I'm going to then move to my friction force equation, and finally to my Newton's second law in the x direction equation to get the applied force I'm looking for. Now we know this. Let's go through and do that. So our gravitational force is going to be 40 kilograms times our constant of 10 newtons per kilogram. Gives this thing a weight of 400 newtons. So our y direction, our normal force is going to equal our gravitational force, which is 400 newtons. Go to our friction equation, says the friction force is going to be equal to the coefficient of friction of 0.3 times our weight of 400 newtons, our normal force of 400 newtons rather, and this gives a friction force of 120 newtons. We can then go to our summation equation in the x direction, hopefully we don't have to solve for this now, so our applied force minus our friction force of 120 going to be equal to the mass of this object, which is 40, times the acceleration of the object, which is 3, or 2 meters per second squared. We do the math, and we get that our applied force must be equal to, let's see, this is 80, plus the 120, 200 meters. There you go. Not too bad. The tricky part is, again, to remember that you have these extra equations, the gravitational force equation and the friction force equation. And just, again, if you're stuck at how to get through these problems of what equation to go to and where to go, find what you're looking for and kind of backwards plan. So in this case, we said we're looking for the applied force. We need the friction force, the mass, and the acceleration. Didn't have the friction force yet. Find that in some other equation. There it is over there to find the friction force. We needed the normal force and coefficient. Find them, we, didn't, we had the coefficient, we didn't have the normal force. Where else is the normal force? Well, that's in this equation. To 
Find that when you need the gravitational force. Where is that? Well, that's in this equation. So you can kind of backwards plan your way through the equations. And then once you figure that out, it's just a little bit of simple algebra.